to go through this pretty quickly. So pause the video and take notes where appropriate. Here's the original function, g of x. I've written it over here this way to emphasize the fact that when you want to find g of some expression or number, that wherever it says input, that's what goes in here. So g of 2, I'd put a 2 where it says input. g of h, I'd put h where it says input. Okay, so for part a, is the point negative 6, 0 on the graph of that function? <clears throat> That's the same as asking the question, when x equals negative 6, does y equal 0? So if I put negative 6 where it says input, this is the work. And I get negative uh, 12 sevenths, it looks like, which does not equal 0. So the answer to this one is no. Here's what the graph looks like. There's the red graph is the graph of the function. There's the point negative 6, 0. <clears throat> Excuse me, definitely not on the graph. For part B, when it asks for the domain, the domain of a rational function uh, involves the fact that you cannot divide by zero. So I've written this function in factored form over here. So this denominator will equal zero when x plus 4 equals zero or x minus 1 equals zero. And that's when x equals negative 4 or x equals 1. In set builder notation, it would look like this. The domain is a set of all numbers x such that x is an element of the real numbers. x does not equal negative 4. x does not equal 1. Here's interval notation. So we can go from negative infinity up to negative 4. The right parentheses indicates that negative 4 is not included in the domain. We join that union symbol with the set of numbers from negative 4 to 1. Again, those numbers are not included. And we join those with the set of x's from 1 to infinity. And I've added vertical asymptotes here at x equals negative 4 and x equals 1. And you can see that the red graph does not cross those vertical asymptotes. X cannot equal negative 4. X cannot equal 1. OK, for part C, they ask the question, what is y when x is negative 2? So that just means put negative 2 in where it says input. So here's negative 2 in the input section. Here's negative 2. Here's negative 2. Just evaluate it. The numerator evaluates to 2 times negative 8, negative 16. The denominator, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. That reduces to 8 thirds. So the point negative 2, comma 8 thirds better be on the graph. And here's proof that it is. Here's point Q, negative 2, comma, 8 thirds right there on the graph. OK, for, for part D, they're asking the question, for what values of x does g of x equal 0? That means they're asking the question, when y equals 0, what does x equal? <clears throat> That's the same as asking, what are the roots of this function? And here's the key. When you have a rational function or you have a fraction, the fraction can only equal 0 when the numerator equals 0. 0 divided by whatever we have down here will give us 0. <clears throat> to solve 2x minus 12 equals 0, x equals 6. So the point 6 comma 0 is a root of this function. And there it is right there, 6 comma 0 is on the graph, OK? And the final question, the hardest of the bunch, g of x equals negative 4 thirds. What's the value of x? Again, that's the same as asking the question, when y equals negative 4 thirds, what does x equal? It's a little harder to solve this equation. You end up with a quadratic. Here's what it looks like on the graph. When y equals negative 4 thirds, that's this blue line right here. 
there are the corresponding x coordinates where that line crosses the red graph, 2 and negative 6.5. Now, how do you find those algebraically? <clears throat> you substitute negative 4 thirds for y. There that is. And we want to know when does that equal this rational function. Since this is a proportion, you could just picture cross multiplying. So that's negative 4 times this denominator equals 3 times this numerator. So here's what that looks like right here. You've got a quadratic equation. When you solve a quadratic, most of the time, you set it equal to 0. So I, I pictured leaving 0 on the left side and moving all these terms to the right side of the equal sign. So the negative 4x squared becomes plus 4x squared, 6x plus 12x when I move the 12x or transpose the negative 12x over, and negative 36 minus 16. So here's what the quadratic equation looks like. <clears throat> you might notice that every term is divisible by 2. That helps with the factoring. So 2x squared plus 9x minus 26 to get from here to here. I used a process called split the middle. If you haven't heard of that, you might want to do a search for split the middle. It's a way to factor trinomials. Uh, and there's how you split the middle. 13x minus 4x. And then you use factoring by grouping on the first two terms and the second two terms. Uh, but you can also use trial and error to get this factoring. But the point is x equals 2 or x equals negative 13 halves. Okay, there you go. Hope that helped. If you have any questions, post a comment. Thank you.